This video is going to cover how to make a 450 wheel horsepower 2.7 EcoBoost F-150. Um, so the 2.7, it's a twin turbo V6. Um, in its stock form, it puts out about 200 or uh, 325 crank horsepower. Um, and there's a lot you can do to this platform to make a ton of power. Um, so the easiest, most uh, effective first mod you can do, um, it'll run you about uh, six, 600 bucks or so, give or take, depending on what company you go with. Um, but by far, tuning it is the best way to get power. Um, so if you have a 15 to 17 uh, year truck, a 93 tune will get you about um, 80 to 110 horsepower, depending on what company you go with. Um, so there's two main companies, and then there's like a bunch of other ones, but the two main ones are Five Star and MPT. Um, they do really good work with the EcoBoost. Um, you can get great power out of them. Um, Five Star will allow you to get about 370 wheel horsepower with just a tune, uh, 93 tune. And then MPT will get you about 410 wheel horsepower. So I originally started with a five star and then I switched over to MPT. Uh, both are great tuning companies. I'm going to have a video here soon covering both tunes and comparing them. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the first uh, most effective mod for your money you can get. Um, it'll really wake these up. And then if you have a 18, 18 through current model year, you can do a E85 tune and and with a E85 tune, you can make some really good power. Um, but on these older ones where you can't run E85, you can even do E30 and E50 on them. But I'd say to run safe, you can do a 93 tune and they run pretty good with that alone. So the next mod I recommend doing is an intake. Um, so this is an in-gen, this is a dual filter. You can get single filters, uh, you can get closed box ones. Um, you can get all sorts. So this one, this one seals to the hood. Um, it still has a little opening here. So a little bit of heat might get in. And, um, but yeah, these definitely help. You can get probably, depending on what type you go with, um, you can get probably anywhere from five to 15 horsepower maybe. Um, I know the open box ones like this do allow a lot more flow um, and they do create a lot of cool intake noise with them. Um, I have seen higher dyno numbers with open box intakes, um, but there's a lot of options you can go with. This one's a nice one, dual filter. It comes with these uh, these that slide off, so uh, it keeps like big big debris out of the filter. Um, just makes it easier to clean them. But that's what I definitely go with. You can get these um, anywhere from four to six hundred bucks for a decent one. Um, but if you're not looking to spend that much, you can definitely go on Facebook Marketplace and pick up uh, a used one. You can pick up a used one for probably anywhere from like 100 to 300 bucks. So after the intake, I recommend going with a front mount intercooler. Um, so they have a, a couple different types. They have one like this that goes straight into the factory location. Uh, then you can get a top mount which it comes up higher and blocks more like the grill area. Um, that one does allow for better cooling. Um, this is a CVF Titan V2 intercooler. So this one ran me about 750 bucks. Um, the top mounts, those are a little bit more in depth to put in, um, to install. It comes with more parts, but those ones will run you around 1200 plus. Um, those ones probably do allow for better cooling. Um, but with this one, I see enough cooling. Um, it'll keep the temps just around ambient, slightly above. Um, definitely lower temps than stock, uh, stock intercooler. Um, so what the intercooler does though, it just cools your charge air. It won't actually allow you for, um, to create more power really. So what it more does is helps you run more consistently. So after doing a few pulls, if your intake temps are rising, like anywhere from like, you know, they can rise up to 40 degrees above ambient, but with a bigger intercooler, it'll help keep your intake temps a lot lower, help you run a little bit more consistently. So after that, I did some downpipes. I went with the, um, 
these are CVF catted downpipes. Um, these ones run you about 750 bucks. Um, there's a few other companies you can go with. Um, and you can go Catless. Catless run you about um, 550 bucks. So these are a, a three inch downpipe. Uh, the stock ones uh, two and a half. So these ones are definitely, uh, they definitely flow more. The cats are uh, way smaller than the stock ones too. And after I installed the, them too, I did get some pretty cool exhaust noise. It did allow for some whistle at idle, um, which I'll show you some sound clips of those at the end of the video. Um, so with downpipes, those will let you get around uh, 20 to 25 horsepower depending on what type you go with. The, um, the catless ones and the catted on a dyno, they made the exact same horsepower, but the catted ones made slightly more torque. So that's the reason I went with the catted. Um, plus, if you live in a state that tests emissions too, you might wanna go with the catted just to be safe. Um, Cause if they do your inspection and don't see cats, then they're gonna know something's up. So after the downpipes, I did a resonator delete. Um, so this probably allows for maybe a couple extra horsepower, nothing crazy. Um, but you definitely get a little bit more of that exhaust whistle and exhaust tone. Yeah, this ran me about 50 bucks. I sourced all the parts from uh, AutoZone and O'Reilly's. Um, just a couple clamps and a piece of pipe that I had to cut. So the next thing I recommend doing is some charge pipes. So you get three charge pipes. Um, these are aluminum. These are a lot uh, fatter than the stock ones. And they are, uh, they're a lot straighter too. They have less bends and curves in them. So the air will flow a little better with them. So you get this one over here. Um, you get this one, which runs from your intercooler into your throttle body. Uh, that one over there goes from your turbo to your intercooler. And this one over here, this one also runs, oops, this one runs from your turbo down there uh, to your intercooler as well. So right down there, you can see the one charge pipe that goes into the throttle body. And then over here, right over there, you can see the two charge pipes feeding into the intercooler. Those are coming from the turbos. Um, so charge pipes, I haven't seen them dyno tested on a 2.7, but I have seen them tested on a 3.5. Um, on a 3.5, they picked up, it was uh, around 15 horsepower at the wheels. Um, so that, that was pretty good right there. Uh, I figured it was worth it. Um, those are CVF charge pipes. Those will run you about 380 bucks. So the next thing I would recommend doing is a uh, thermostat a little bit of a colder thermostat will help just keep your all your temps down um, so i went with a one uh, 170 degree um, they have all sorts i think the 170 was the best option because anything cooler on these um, i know people have been seeing a lot of carbon buildup um, so 170 is about your best bet um, that'll just help to keep all your temps down um, run a little bit safer uh, then after that i just did some um, ford gt uh, cold spark plugs so those will ignite your fuel at a different uh, temperature range and they are a lot safer to run when um, when you are making a little bit more power than stock so those spark plugs will run you about 75 ish bucks um, those will definitely help uh, with less knock though so you'll run a lot safer with those so i'm going to end this video with getting you some exhaust clips um, so thanks for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs>